Ayla is the main character of Jean Owl's Earth's Children novels. She is a Cro-Magnon woman who was raised by Neanderthals. Ayla was played by Daryl Hannah in the 1986 movie The Clan of the Cave Bear. Ayla's character has been described as an example of the rebellious primordial that conquers adversity with wit and will. Topic. Background Ayla is orphaned as a young Cro-Magnon child when an earthquake opens a fissure in the ground into which the camp of her mother falls and is destroyed. It was mentioned a few times that the location of the camp was odd and not near known Cro-Magnon settlements. The facts that no father or other family members were mentioned and the odd location of the mother's camp suggest that the mother either chose or was forced not to live with her clan. Ayla is swimming nude in the river beside the campsite when the earthquake starts and watches the tragedy in horror. Wandering aimlessly, alone, frightened, hungry and helpless, Ayla eventually encounters a cave lion which chases her into a narrow crack in a rock wall. Attempting to pull Ayla out, the lion gashes open Ayla's leg, leaving four deep parallel wounds on her thigh. After a day spent hiding in terror and driven by thirst, Ayla, emerges from her hiding place to drink at the nearby stream and then collapses, delirious from fever and starvation. There she is found by a group of Neanderthals, a clan, led by Brun, and is adopted by Isa, that clan's medicinewoman or healer. Though neither Isa, Ayla's adoptive mother, nor Creb, the Mogyor, a shaman-like character, her adoptive father, know Ayla's age for certain. Author Jean Orell places Ayla at the age of five years in the book's second paragraph, and her foster family eventually guesses her age accurately. See the clan of the cave bear, the valley of horses, the mammoth hunters, the plains of passage, the shelters of stone, and the land of painted caves for a detailed synopsis of Ayla's life. Topic. Characteristics Ayla is described as tall, with blonde hair, grey-blue eyes, a well-toned body, and a strangely accented voice actually a speech mannerism. She has been raised with clan customs, sign language instead of speech, not to laugh or smile, and not to cry. Almost every male Cro-Magnon character in the series finds Ayla exceptionally beautiful, though Ayla describes herself as big and ugly because she was regarded by the clan as ugly. Another word frequently used to describe her is exotic, indicating that she seems a bit foreign to everyone who meets her, and that her own people live somewhere else. One of Ayla's most important insights is the concept that men have something to do with the conception of children. Clan people believe that pregnancy and birth are a matter of spirit totems competing. When a woman menstruates, it means her totem has fought off another and has won, but if a woman gets pregnant it means her totem has been overcome. Ayla suspects that this all has something to do with sex, or the relieving of a man's needs with a woman. She comes to think of this as a combination of male and female essence. Ayla has a long-standing problem with Browd, the son of the leader's mate while she lives with the clan, who is jealous of the attention she receives. His envy causes him to behave in a disgraceful manner, while women expect to be ordered around, Browd also beats and rapes her, impregnating her at the age of eleven. These actions cause his mother's mate to question whether Browd is fit to be leader. Upon becoming leader after the former tribal head believes he is ready, Browd orders a death curse on Ayla and forces her to leave the clan forever, leaving her son Dirk behind. Throughout the series, there are many references to Ayla's having great spiritual and intellectual powers, many of which actually may be simple reasoning and common sense. She does have a knack for inventing things, and is credited with many innovations actually made over thousands of years of human history. The Clan of the Cave Bear Ayla earns her name during her first waking meeting with the clan members, they cannot pronounce her birth name, and their approximation, Ayla, becomes her given name. Aurel uses the term, polysyllabic, to describe Ayla's birth name, implying it is more than two syllables long. This is maybe further supported by Krebs' first try at pronouncing her name, Aayrr which could be an attempt to say, A-E-L-A. However, Aurel does not explicitly state the name of Ayla's birth. As a child among the clan, she is described as lucky, favored by the spirits. 
Isa later surmises that Ayla was born to a medicine woman of the others though Ayla has very little memory of her birth mother and knows nothing of the tribe of the others to whom she was born. This passage may be a hint by the author of the reason for Ayla's mother's camp to be in such an odd location, with no other mentioned people around. Although Ayla lacks the clan's ability to access ancestral memories, Isa succeeds in training her as a medicine healer. In her childhood and young adulthood she invents several things previously unknown, as well as innovations to existing tools and their uses see below. It is here that we see her winning combination of the clan's detailed factual knowledge, and the other's innovative and flexible thinking. When Ayla acts as the medicine woman at the clan gathering and prepares the sacred herb for the mog -er ceremony, she ingests some of the juice from the root and is strongly affected by its psychotropic properties. CREB makes telepathic contact with her, and she follows him through his psychic exploration of the clan. Memories. She then follows the path of the other's divergence from the clan, and among other things sees a glimpse of the future. Box-like structures Long ribbons of stone Strange animals crawling at great speeds Huge birds that flew without flapping their wings Apparently Aurel intended to describe Ayla seeing a glimpse of the modern era, and even beyond to the next stage of human evolution. CREB has seen all these things with her, and telepathically orders her out of the cave when she returns to her own mind, knowing in his heart that only the others will continue to evolve and that the clan will die out. <laughs> the Valley of Horses Alone in a secluded valley where she has fled after being expelled from the clan, Ayla adopts and raises a cave lion cub she calls Baby and a horse she calls Winnie. She originally stops in the valley to stay for the winter, but stays to take care of the animal friends. She learns that to survive on her own, she must break many clan traditions she had previously been raised under. She meets John Dayla when he is attacked and mauled by Baby and tends his wounds. He begins teaching her his language. Some weeks or months later she dreams of her own mother speaking to her and of an earthquake, which betokened tragedy and upheaval to Ayla. After this dream, Ayla suddenly speaks Jindala's language fluently even to the idioms, where before she had spoken only in broken sentences. Aurel may have meant this event as a partial recovery of repressed memories, but Ayla still does not remember her own or her mother's name, her language, or anything of her past before her adoption. John Dayla recovers and takes Ayla, Racer, Winnie's offspring, and Winnie with him while he completes the pilgrimage he is on, intending to bring her home to meet his family. Topic: <laughs> The Mammoth Hunters. Ayla continues to have psychic and prophetic experiences linked to the rituals used by the Mamutoi people. She dreams that she has two sons, Dirk and an unknown son who appears to have no clan lineage at all, they are on the verge of open conflict, and Ayla struggles to reach them in time to prevent the destruction of one son by the other. It is suggested that the meaning of the dream has less to do with her children than the evolution of the others and decline of the clan. She becomes promised to Rannick who comes to believe that she is an incarnation of what he calls the spirit woman the perfect spirit model of a woman in whose image all are made, and that she may even be the Earth Mother incarnate. Shaman Mamut indicates to John Dayla, Rannick, and Vinkovec, another Mamutoi shaman who wants to marry Ayla, that Ayla has some great purpose. Vinkovec attempts to hypnotize Ayla, but she is able to resist him, as well as the spiritual influences of others. Though Ayla contends that her ability to tame and win the loyalty of animals is only a matter of time, patience and proper handling, her gift for making friends of numerous animals is considered a sign of her supernatural gifts. <laughs> the Plains of Passage On the journey back to the Zalandani territory, Jindala's home, many of the tribes Ayla encounters mistake Ayla's extreme creative intelligence and even her common sense reasoning for supernatural powers. John Dayla and Ayla both insist that she has no such gifts, but they do not stay in one place long enough to convince anyone otherwise. Ayla continues to have prophetic dreams. The Shelters of Stone 
Upon arriving at the ninth cave, Jindala's dwelling, Ayla realizes that this cave is identical to one she's been seeing in her dreams. Her dreams and waking psychic visions become more frequent and more powerful, and the female shaman Zalandoni consents them. However, Ayla rejects Zalandoni's offers to train her as a priestess, saying she merely wishes to live a normal life. Zalandoni finally convinces Ayla to join the spiritual devotees, known as those who serve the mother. The Land of Painted Caves Published March 29, 2011. The last book in the Earth's Children series, Ayla is now about 25 years old and training to become a spiritual leader of the Zalandani. Her training includes a series of harrowing journeys and gives her problems when trying to balance her work and her family life. Invention and skills Phenomenal memory, because she doesn't have inherent clan memories which allow recall after a few reminders, Ayla is at first seen by the clan as dimwitted because she must be told or shown repeatedly how to do things. As a defense, she works to develop her memory skills so she needs to be shown or told only once. This knack comes in handy when she encounters new languages. Two stone technique. After almost being harmed by a lynx when she missed with her sling, Ayla develops a technique to reload her sling after a cast during the downfall, for immediate use. In reality, Ayla's method of rapid slinging two stones is not possible. Diagnosis, as reasoned by Isa, although Ayla could not memorize all clan medicinal law, she has the ability to reason intuitively, recognize the causes of illnesses and treat them appropriately. Fatherhood, on her own, Ayla eventually develops some understanding of the relationship between a male having sex with a female and subsequent pregnancy. Clan belief is that pregnancy is due to spirits and they do not have a biological concept of fatherhood. For that matter, many Cro-Magnon groups which Ayla later encounters have not made this discovery either, though a few other Cro-Magnons she encounters have also independently of each other, come to realize that there is a link between sex and pregnancy. Arguably this has a greater and more widespread impact than any of Ayla's other inventions, because at the end of the series she becomes a shamaness and helps propagate this knowledge, drastically altering the social development of the Cro-Magnons, who until then did not live in monogamous couples in the series. Brazia, Ayla is the only clan woman permitted to hunt small game only, using a sling. As she matures, she finds that her breasts impede her mobility. She noticed that men wore a leather loincloth to protect their exposed and delicate organs, and fashioned a band to hold her bosom in place, tied around her back." The Clan of the Cave Bear, Chapter 26 Atlathal, works with her partner Jondala to develop a spear thrower. Taming animals, out of loneliness in her valley, Ayla has raised a horse Winnie her foal racer, a cave lion cub she calls Baby, later with the mammoth hunters she gets a wolf she simply calls Wolf. Horse equipment, inspired by the idea that she can ride Winnie, Ayla invents drag poles, carrying packs, and notably the travoir. Percussion fire starting, after a mistake in making flint weapons, Ayla recognizes that sparks from striking a firestone of iron pyrite with a piece of flint can start a fire. Sewing needle, Ayla tried and failed to learn the mamutoi sewing techniques, and instead came up with a sharp bone with a hole, which she calls a thread puller, to draw sinew through leather, instead of just punching holes and pushing the thread in with another tool. Surgical stitches. When Ayla first encounters John Dayla, his leg has been torn open by a cave lion, to the point where the muscle is hanging off the bone. Ayla determines that in order to heal properly, his leg would have to be physically held closed. She notices how his clothing, in the typical style of his people, but unfamiliar to her, is formed of panels of cloth tied together with thongs, and has the idea to literally tie his leg back together by boring holes in his flesh and muscle, then threading cord through the holes and tying them off. Much later, in the shelters of stone, Wolf is mauled almost to death by another wild wolf. Ayla uses her thread puller sewing needle to stitch his wounds. Needless to say, both patients made full recoveries. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Children. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Dirk. 
Born to Ayla while she still lived among the clan, Dirk is considered half-caste, part other, part clan. His father is Browd, the brutish son of the clan leader who repeatedly raped Ayla as a form of punishment. He displays physical characteristics of both clan Neanderthal and the others Cro -Magnon. like Ayla he can vocalize. Although the concept of interbreeding between Neanderthal and other early humans is debated by scientists to this day, remains at several sites indicate that it happened. Dirk's fate is bound up in the clan, when Ayla is cursed with death outcast for the second time when she defies Browd who has been named the new leader, she leaves the clan and her son behind. Readers around the world express their desire to learn what fate has in store for Dirk. John Ayla Ayla's infant daughter, in the shelters of stone fathered by John Ayla. She grows into a beautiful and beloved child, close to both parents, and enjoys time with her own horse, Grey, born to Ayla's horse Winnie. <laughs> 